Blessings to you as we prepare to celebrate the second Sunday of Advent this coming Sunday. As I've mentioned before, the middle two Sundays of Advent are in large part devoted to John the Baptist. We honor John throughout the year, but only in the season of Advent do we delve into his life as we do. In many ways, John is considered the prophet of certainty. When Jesus came on the scene to be baptized, it was John who said, that's the one, that's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Also, his preaching had a, a bravery and a certainty about it. You brood of vipers who warned you to flee the wrath to come have fruits worthy of repentance. Now, you would think that some people would shy away from such harsh words, but people in John's day were much like you and me. They panted for authenticity and truth. And we we're told that the cities and the villages emptied as people um, uh, journeyed into the dangerous wilderness to hear John the Baptist. And they're like you and me because they wanted a faith that required something of them. And John gave them that faith. And yet even the prophet of certainty at, at the end of his life had doubt. There's a haunting story in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke of John in prison awaiting execu execution from King Herod. And he sends disciples to Jesus with the most vulnerable of questions. Are you the one or should we look for another? And Jesus' response was so kind and loving. Go tell John the Baptist what you see, the people being healed, what they, the, the, the cleansed from their bad spirits and what they've learned. And then he gave John the Baptist a compliment. There's no man born of woman greater than John the Baptist. And I wonder how comforting those words might have been to John the Baptist in the last hours of his life. But that story tells us that, that doubt is not the opposite of faith. It's a very important part of faith. Um, when we doubt, we, it opens us to great growth. Uh, I call it the soft shell uh, crab phase of, of life. When a crab sheds its shell, that's when a crab grows. But it's also when the crab is most vulnerable. So John the Baptist teaches us that part of faith uh, is doubt. As I was looking in this beautiful church for images of John the Baptist, I found many. This is a little church, and that's why we call it the little church around the corner. But it's chock full of images. You can almost find any saint, any character of the Bible in the stained glass windows or in the, in the carvings of the church. And so various uh, images of this church will pop up in this video, mostly of John the Baptist baptizing Jesus. But this is a fascinating uh, stained glass window of John the Baptist and Jesus as little boys. It's often debated whether or not they knew one another growing up, because after the all, according to the Gospel of Luke, they were cousins. But here we have Jesus with the Lamb, representing, of course, the Lamb of God, and John, always dressed, even in depictions as a child, in camel's hair and rough clothing, reminiscent of Elijah the prophet in the Old Testament, who was dressed in a similar way. And almost always of the depictions, John the Baptist is carrying a thin staff made out of reed. Reed is a plant or, or a bush that grew in tidal basins, in very difficult areas where no other plants might be able to grow. A very strong, a very strong plant. And it goes, harkens to Jesus' compliment of John the Baptist when he said to his followers, what do you expect, a reed shaken in the wind? No, John the Baptist was courageous and brave. He was as strong as a reed. And so John the Baptist is there. Uh, uh, with Jesus. Uh, this, is, on a very personal uh, word, this is a painting that hangs in the living room of the rectory. When 1995, when I was um, uh, in living in Washington, D.C., an old friend mailed me this painting. He was giving away his possessions. He said, I want you to have this. It's a prototype of a, paint, a stained glass window being commissioned in France. Maybe one day, you will find the window. Again, it's a depiction of John the Baptist baptizing Jesus. Now, I'll tell you about this because when I called him that day, he had died only two hours earlier of AIDS. He was giving away all his things before he died. And I mention this because this is the week of World AIDS Day. We had a beautiful commemoration here on December 1st, and that is in, within the email. The link to that is in the email um, below uh, in, in this email today. So thus the life of John the Baptist. The Lord is glorified in his holy ones. Come, let us adore him.